Over the years, I've been pretty lucky in that most of my crops can avoid major pest outbreaks. My garden, like many others, stays safe thanks to the proliferation of predators and the balance of life that exists outdoors. But when you bring plants inside, even ones stripped of all their foliage, like my overwintered peppers here, you lose the inherent protection that that balance brings. So today, let me show you my recipe for a safe, natural, effective indoor insecticidal spray using just two ingredients you probably already have. In a diversely planted outdoor garden, as long as you don't use crazy chemicals, you'll find that nature tends to take care of itself. Major pest outbreaks are pretty rare, and if they do occur, it's usually as a symptom of a larger problem. But it's the stark contrast of this balance of nature that makes growing indoors so challenging. Because once you bring those plants inside, that's when things get dicey. Growing indoors from seed with a sterilized potting mix usually means you're safe from any infestations. It's not always completely safe as fungus gnats do come in with the soil. And as a matter of fact, so do spider mites. The issue is outdoors, those guys don't even register and they're never an issue. Indoors, both those guys will take plants down with ease. Fungus gnats for the seedlings and spider mites for the adult plants. The other two really common pests, aphids and whiteflies, usually come in as passengers. It's when we bring plants indoors that have been outside that these two can rear their ugly heads. And dang, it can get ugly. Hey, before we get into our recipe, let's discuss why indoor infestations are so bad compared to the outdoor ones. Like we mentioned, it all has to do with balance. Outdoors, a pest outbreak sends off chemical and electrochemical signals to all the predators. Sort of like saying, hey look everyone, there's a free buffet over here. Letting all the predatory insects know this is the place to be. So the predators quickly move in and balance is restored. This all happens on a micro level every day in our gardens without us even noticing. Indoors, there's no such system of balance. No fail-safe checks to keep pests from overloading our plants into oblivion. So they run rampant, exploding in numbers, decimating everything in their path. I see a couple aphids outside, I don't even think twice. If I see one inside, it's all out war, because I know what that means. So that brings us to our solution. Literally, a solution of just three ingredients. Let's talk about how to make it, how to use it, and why it works. When I'm spraying food crops that I intend for me and my family to eat, the last thing I want to use is harmful chemicals. I don't use synthetic chemicals outside of my garden, and I don't intend to use them indoors either. Fortunately, to get rid of the big four indoor nasties of aphids, fungus gnats, spider mites, and white flies, we can do so naturally and safely. Our first ingredient is the only active one in our mix, and that's natural or cast aisle soap. This inexpensive liquid soap is free of harsh detergents, chemicals, perfumes, and is completely plant-based. But don't get the impression that it's completely benign to our target pests. The fatty acids in these soaps suffocate the soft-bodied exoskeletons of our target pests, destroying their permeability and dehydrating them. And despite them not containing any synthetics or harsh chemicals, they're very effective at doing it. Now, not to be confused with systemic poisons that linger and kill broadly over time, soaps like this only work on contact. They must be sprayed directly onto the bad guys to work, and eventually the soap spray just dries up or it washes off. Great in that it's safe that it won't harm you or your plants, 
but its application is a little more stringent, a little more nuanced than those broadcast poisons would be. Okay, our next ingredient is more of a helper rather than an active killer like the soap is. And that's vegetable oil. Olive oil, canola oil, grapeseed oil, it doesn't matter. They all work. Adding these oils to our insecticide spray will act as a spreader sticker for greater application effectiveness. It's optional, but trust me, it really works. And finally, we have our last ingredient, the vector that makes this all possible. And that's just water. Now that we have our three ingredients, let's talk ratios and find the best recipe. Everyone seems to have a different opinion on the amount of each ingredient that you need for these insecticidal sprays. So how do you know which one is right? The answer is, they're kind of all right. And by that I mean insecticidal sprays can work at a range of strengths. So when I'm making up a new batch of spray, I try to make it so it's right at the edge of effectiveness. This saves on both the ingredients and money. Of course you want to use enough strength so it totally eliminates all the pests, but not so much that it's totally overkill and wasteful. So just how much is that? Well, I've tested it over time and this is the ratio I've come up with. Starting with one liter or one quart of water, add two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of soap and two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of vegetable oil. At this strength, it's completely safe for the plants and completely unsafe for our unwanted pests. Not to mention, it's a perfect consistency for spraying and not gumming up our nozzles. Of course you can go stronger, but the returns are probably highly diminishing. And honestly, over the years, I've never seen greater effect by using more. So you're just using more for no reason at a greater cost. And at a high enough strength, it could actually be bad for the plants. As mentioned, this is a contact spray, not a systemic. This means for it to affect the insects, they have to come in contact with it. Not only that, these sprays don't always affect the eggs of the pests. To break the life cycle and completely eliminate the infestation, we'll need multiple applications over time. Here's what I use for the top four indoor bad guys. Aphids live for around a month and a female can start laying after they're only a week old. They can produce up to 100 offspring at a time, so a population can get out of hand pretty quickly. To eliminate the aphid life cycle, and your infestation, look at twice weekly sprayings for about four weeks. Fungus gnats live in the soil and they really only attack seedlings. On top of that, the adults only live about eight days. So I just keep spraying until I don't see them anymore. It's the larvae that live in the soil that feed on the plants, so breaking this life cycle isn't as straightforward. However, only the adults can reproduce so nailing them in that eight day window should be enough. The length of a spider mite's life cycle is entirely dependent on temperature. Females lay eggs all day, every day for their entire adult life, you know, which is about up to a month. These guys require the longest treatment plan at around six weeks of twice daily sprays. The eggs aren't affected by the spray, so the adults really need to be blasted before they get a chance to lay. And for white flies, they can live for a long time, well over a month, and they live exclusively on the underside of the leaves. So you need to be stealthy with your application. Try to get them in the morning when it's cool and they aren't so active. A six week plan of twice weekly sprays should be enough. It should be noted that anytime you're spraying your plant with something new, you should do a test leaf first, just to see if it reacts. These sprays are pretty benign and the soaps shouldn't hurt your plants, but it's good practice. While indoor infestations are inevitable, they don't have to be devastating. Using a natural soap mix diligently and methodically can solve any pest problem and get you back to doing what you love. And that's growing plants. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.